breaking news came out today of pound for pound number one, Terrence Bud Crawford. When speaking about Canelo, Crawford stated, and I quote, he shied away from Jamal Charlo and Andre for a long time. When you look at Canelo's career, it's like he shied away from the black fighters. I think the black fighters give him the most problems. End of the quote. Now, you know it's bad when a fighter avoids a particular race that everyone starts seeing it. Some fighters have the courage to actually say something about it. Other fighters don't because of the backlash they will receive in the process. That's why I got to give Crawford a whole lot of credit because Crawford said it on the zone where they pro Canelo, especially if Bud said it to AK and Barack, knowing their history and how biased they are towards Canelo. Nevertheless, the truth have to be spoken in which Crawford did his portion and even more. Bud definitely has all my respect and he should earn every single person respect all around the globe. Furthermore, I told you guys on more than one occasion, what you hear me say, trainers and fighters repeat to a T because it's the whole absolute truth. It makes too much sense and logic. Everything adds up. It's factual, not emotional. That's why it's the absolute truth. Now, one thing about the truth, either it's going to hurt or set you free. It all depends on the person. But see, these Canelo fans, they want to hide from the truth. However, you can run, but you can't hide. The truth will always find you. Matter of fact, these decafs are actually truth seekers. That's why they tune in to my channel every day, regardless how much the truth hurts their feelings. Just like when you go to the doctor, you want the doctor to tell you the truth instead of lie to you to make you feel better. So welcome to the IQ University where you get free education all with a package with free medication for your feelings. More importantly, if Canelo is avoiding a particular race such as maybe Asians in the sport of boxing, then it's not really that big of a deal because we know they not the best in the sport of boxing. However, when you avoid the most dominant race in the sport of boxing, then turn around and say you the best in the world. That's a slap to all of the boxing fans worldwide. Because Canelo, he can say he's pound for pound number one. Yes, I agree. Canelo is Europe pound for pound number one and the number one pound for pound cherry picker in the sport. Canelo cherry picked so hard his last fight. The man went out with the bang. He lost his DAZN contract for cherry picking Avini Yildrum, a fighter coming off a loss and a two year layoff in which Canelo requested to fight this man for David Benavidez WBC vacant title. Avini Yildrum, a fight before he lost he fought a man with three wins and 33 losses with three draws. This is the top of cherry pick we talking about. You guys know if Crawford chose to fight someone like Ivini Yildrum, they will bury him alive with criticism. However, with Canelo, they completely ignored the fact that Ivini Yildrum coming off a loss and two year layoff. They try to justify it by claiming, oh, well, he's his mandatory. Well, I didn't see them same people demand Canelo to fight Jamal Trollo when he was his mandatory as well. Instead, Canelo, he made a whole organization, the Witness Protection Franchise Organization. Canelo is the pioneer of the NBF Witness Protection Franchise. No black fighters witness protection franchise. This is what Canelo Alvarez legacy will be remembered for. Being the entrepreneur and the pioneer slash the finder of the duck witness protection franchise designation. You literally can't make this up. 
Canelo is the pioneer of the WBC franchise designation. So when Crawford says Canelo shied away from all of these undefeated black fighters, that's the whole absolute truth. Do you guys know the last time Canelo Alvarez fought an undefeated black American fighter was eight years ago? Yes, almost a decade ago. And do you guys know Canelo lost that fight? Wow, what a weird coincidence, isn't it? A year prior to that, Canelo had a very, very close fight with another undefeated black American fighter in 2012. That was nine years ago against Trout. He only fought Trout because Floyd Mayweather told him, if you don't fight Trout, I'm not going to fight you. Ever since then, Canelo haven't fought not even one undefeated black American fighter. Canelo at the moment in time, he's on a Europe tour as we speak. That's why he's Europe pound for pound number one. However, the king of boxing worldwide, the number one pound for pound worldwide is without a question, Terrence Bud Crawford. Because of his resume, how dominant he is in the ring. He never lost. Matter of fact, he never had a close fight and always wanted to fight the best, the best of the best in every single division he campaigned in. Unlike Canelo, when 160 got too deep with Charlo and Andre, he decided to move up to 168 and become undisputed there. Initially, he wanted to be undisputed at 160. But the competition got too real, and since the NBF rule always apply, he moved up to 168, and now he's on his Europe tour. On the other hand, when it comes to Terrence Crawford, he moved up from 140 after becoming undisputed to 147, the deepest division in boxing, and challenged the best out of the jump. He was calling out Keith Thurman, Errol Spence, and anybody you can name at 147. And at the moment in time, he's challenging one of the hottest contenders, Virgil Ortiz. See, unlike Canelo Alvarez, who was not a champion when Charlo and Andre were champions in the same division, then they all were champion in the same division from 154 to 160. In the meantime, Canelo avoided both Charlo and Andre, he pretended as if they don't even exist. I mean, till this day, he been avoiding them for six years, till this day, still pretending as if they don't exist. And all of his fans kept asking about Jamal Charlo and Andre's credentials in order to justify why Canelo is ducking them. Now, we're not going to bring up Avini and what is his credentials. Let's compare what Canelo is doing to what other fighters are doing in the deepest division in boxing, such as Terrence Crawford, for example. You see Terrence and Errol Spence, pound for pound number one and pound for pound number two. They in the same division where Virgil Ortiz is a very high contender. You can look at Virgil Ortiz as the Canelo on the come up at 147. Now, do you see Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, or their fans bring up anything about Virgil resume, credentials, so on and so forth, and claim he haven't earned a shot at either one? Absolutely not. We call him for the fight. And it's actually Virgil Ortiz and his team that's not so confident after his last performance for good reasons because Hooker is nowhere near on Terrence Crawford level. There's levels to this. Terrence even said that Virgil Ortiz don't really want it because Virgil confident dropped tremendously after the fight. Before the fight, we heard so much news of Virgil Ortiz challenging Crawford once he beat Hooker, 
But during the aftermath, Virgil Ortiz, he said, I don't want to call nobody out. Whoever gives me the opportunity, I'll take it. And then when Crawford started pointing fingers toward him, Virgil Ortiz had no choice but to say, I fight Crawford. I don't care if I'm ready or not. The only problem with that is that Virgil Ortiz was talking out of pride, then confidence, which means his team is not going to make that fight happen next. The point here is you see Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford ready to jump inside of that square circle with Virgil Ortiz in a heartbeat. Mind you, Virgil Ortiz is like the mini Canelo right now at 147. But Canelo, on the other hand, at 160, he's in the same position. However, the outcome was exactly the reverse. Instead of Canelo challenging both Charlo and Andre the same way Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford are doing to Virgil Ortiz, Canelo elects to do otherwise. This man gave up his belt and requested a fake belt to save face. The NBF Witness Protection Franchise designation. The WBC organization is in Mexico City. So when Jamal Charlo became Canelo mandatory and he told Canelo, I'm willing to fight you in Mexico City, Canelo surrendered the belt. In other words, he gave up his territory the pride of Mexico by allowing Jamal Charlo to conquer the whole country. In the meantime, Canelo is pretending as if Charlo don't exist. I mean, the audacity by this man. He did the same thing with Andre when Andre was a champion and Canelo was not at 154. Andre gave Canelo an opportunity. He called him out. He called him the B word. He told him to grow some cojones and hop inside of the square circle. However, Canelo kept ignoring him. The moment Andre vacated the belt, Canelo fought for that same belt the next day against Smith. Canelo fought the whole Smith family in Texas that nobody know, but he won't fight none of the Charlo twins that's from Texas that everyone knows. Man, someone get the Charlo twins on the horn and tell them to change their last names to Smith. That might be the only way for them to get a fight. Act as if you're from Europe and get a European descent. That's the only way it seems like. The truth of the matter for Canelo to avoid the most dominant race in the sport of boxing, then claims that he the best in the world, shows that Canelo doesn't have any class or respect for boxing as a whole. For the great legends from Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Robertson, Joe Lewis, Sugar Ray Leonard, Hagler Hearn, Mike Tyson, Floyd Mayweather, and the list goes on and on and on. For Canelo to claim he the best without fighting the most dominant race in the sport, it's like a team in basketball that's placed outside of the United States that continuously claim they the best in the world, but they never played against the United States in the NBA. Then to make matter worse, that team moved to the United States and they still avoid entering the NBA. That's equivalence to what Canelo Alvarez is doing today in the sport of boxing, turning the whole sport to a mockery. You hear people continuously say, Canelo improved so much since he lost to Floyd Mayweather. Improved where? He's that same fighter with the same attributes. He's good, don't get me wrong, but he's still stuck in the mud. He still doesn't have any footwork. He only improved to you guys because he's avoiding all the undefeated black Americans. Because if you truly believe he improved, then you should be able to point out what period of time Canelo made that improvement. I'm really curious to know. Since Canelo lost to Floyd, a grandpa version, a 37 years old version, 
that was fighting in his fifth weight class. At that time, Floyd Mayweather went up against Canelo, who was entering his prom at 23 years old at his bully weight division. Floyd Mayweather won every single minute of every single round. He gave Canelo Alvarez a PhD whooping. The fight right after against Angulo, everybody started screaming out, Canelo, he improved, he better than ever. Now he could beat Floyd. Then when he fought Lara, he robbed Lara. So we were able to see that he haven't improved from that Floyd Mayweather fight. It's a matter of styles make fights. Because against Kirkland, he looked great. Then against Amir Khan, he looked like crap. Then when Canelo fought Triple G twice, both fights could have went either way. So when did Canelo made that huge improvement? Last time I checked, when Canelo fought Amir Khan, who was two weight divisions below him, Amir Khan was outboxing Canelo with ease the first four rounds. It took Canelo six rounds to land that overhand right. In comparison to that, it took Terrence Bud Crawford less than a round to time Amir Khan with that same overhand right that took Canelo six rounds. Crawford, a person who you can say at the time was smaller than Amir Khan. He won every single round, beat Amir Khan with ease. That's why there's levels to this. And that's why Terrence Crawford have always been pound for pound number one ever since Andre Ward retired. But at the time, they continuously put Lomachenko above Terrence Crawford on that pound for pound list. However, ironically, when they were erasing Lomachenko losses to put him on top of Bud, the moment Lomachenko lost, I don't know how Canelo bypassed Terrence Crawford on the pound for pound list on all of these old media websites. It makes no sense at all. Just to show the double standards that exist in the sport. You see Terrence Crawford, he does everything he's supposed to and even more. Crawford goes out of his way to fight Errol Spence, to fight Virgil Ortiz, and fight the best every single time. Meanwhile, Canelo, they want to say he the best in the world when he's not even the best in his division. When he continuously avoids Andre Trollo, he went from NBF, no black fighters, to no Mexican fighters at 168, avoiding David Benavidez. Canelo literally came out and said, I'm no longer going to fight any more Mexicans. I guess Canelo forgot he fought Lopez, Angulo, and Chavez Jr. The point here is you can't call yourself the best if you don't want to fight the best. You see Crawford, at one point he was begging to fight the boogeyman Errol Spence because he wanted to prove that he the best. He wasn't content of being pound for pound number one. Nah, he wanted to achieve more. That's why new media, we have Terrence Crawford as pound for pound number one. Oscar De La Hoya have Crawford as pound for pound number one. Floyd Mayweather have Crawford as pound for pound number one. You hear Eric Morales, he came out and said that Canelo is not the best. Crawford and Errol Spence are better boxers. Now, mind you, Eric Morales is another number on a long list of legendary fighters that criticized Canelo Alvarez for cherry picking, not fighting anybody in their prom. This is what Chavez Sr., Barrera, Morales, and all of these legendary Mexican fighters are telling Canelo to do is fight people in their prom. Quit cherry picking. Oh, let me guess. They hate it, according to the Canelo fans. Well, I have bad news for you decafs. This is fair criticism that Canelo being criticized for. The truth of the matter, the criticism have always been there but old media continuously ignored it because Canelo have his hope insurance. He has the complexion for the connection to get the ultimate protection 
from any criticism. But the truth will always come out. And you see Crawford speaking out. You could add him to the list with Chavez Sr., Hopkins, Oscar, Marquez, so on and so forth. Majority of these fighters have Terrence Crawford as pound for pound number one when they not from the United States. So we know they not biased. They simply telling the truth with the facts being laid out. It's interesting. I heard Shakur Stevenson say that Canelo Alvarez is his favorite fighter or one of his favorite fighters, which I find that really dope. However, only if Shakur knew that if Canelo Alvarez campaigned in his division, and let's say hypothetically, Shakur was undisputed, you best believe, and I will put my house on it, Canelo will duck him. If Canelo is ducking Charlo and Andre for the past six years till this day, and Canelo still pretending as if they don't even exist, then the top of talent Shakur is, Canelo will never acknowledge him. After all, Canelo is the pioneer of the Duck organization franchise. Shakur should know that because Oscar Valdez have been ducking him for a while now. Like Shakur said, ducking season continues. This man been ducking me for a century. Now, how you think Charlo and Andrade feels? More importantly, Canelo Alvarez is showing Oscar Valdez the way. They are training partners. Oscar Valdez looks up to Canelo. That's why he's following the blueprint, the ducking print. So I really wonder if Shakur Stevenson will still look up to Canelo and have him as one of his favorite fighters after knowing that information. Now for the people that want to say, well, he fought Floyd Mayweather. You got to remember <laughs> the Floyd Mayweather fight. It was a win-win situation because taking an L from Money Mayweather helps more than hurts. Canelo viewed that L as a blessing. He looked at it as a lesson. He became more popular after a loss and moved on. Canelo made all the money in the world and received all the fame in the world even after receiving an L. So he looked at it as a WW either way. Now if that was Pretty Boy Mayweather in his prom, around the same size, not outweighed by Canelo by 20 pounds and not as popular as Money Mayweather. Man, Canelo will never get in the ring with a pretty boy Mayweather. You could put a gun on his head and he still won't fight pretty boy. Canelo will tell you to pull the trigger. We see it today. Canelo haven't fought an undefeated black American fighter since Mayweather. So let that sink in. With that being stated, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe below and click on the notification bell to be continued on the next episode of Aki Aki Ak TV. Peace and we at you.